hopes that there's no hard feelings, but he was just doing his job. I'll stand up and I'll again, greet sir. them. It's like, ah, my lady Moonfire. So nice of you, nice of you to join us. Um, we're just about ready to eat and drink if you want to join us. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Don't worry, the bill's Shema already taken care Shemash of. Shemash is going <clears> to <throat> say thank you for paying. <laughs> what? Huh? I'm paying. Ah, it's for a good cause. <clears throat> Lady Moonfire, we're here. The town I'll was pull attacked a chair out again for last it night. Uh, barkeep pulls a couple tables together, and actually, Brother Griffin sits down as well. And he says, "I'd, I'd like to tell you all something." And then he and then he looks at you, Wallian, and he says, "I, I just want to let you know that." Santine is not dead. Santine... He's not? No, he's not. Santine is recovering at the temple. The the whole ruse was to to get Alcine because of his, his dirty dealings with the banana rammers. We had found some information that Alcine had still been in cahoots with the banana rammers. And back in Waterdeep, there had been some trouble with their thieves' guild, I guess you could call them, and a couple other rival guilds uh, that are trying to expand on turf. And Alcine was still with them. Even though he was traveling with you, uh, he had other underlying motives I guess you could say to try to try to conceal and, and deceive a lot of other people and actually he had actually deceived you all as well <clears throat> now Wallian you, you know some information but all of it isn't isn't fully correct but like I had said uh, Santine uh, which is one of your one of your mentors he is he is safe but the whole, the whole reason for the execution was to kill Alcine. But unfortunately, that was not our doing. That was, that was the banana rammers, obviously. I'm gonna get really serious then and be like, my my um, my information can verify what you're saying as well. Plus, I know a little bit more. Um, oh. I know it was uh, Birgitta, Birgitta Silverbow was the one that killed your man. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, grunt. <laughs> grunt. <clears throat> yeah, Grunt, the half-orc slayer. Yeah. He was a barbarian. He was the executioner. That never had to be used, so on his first public ex execution, he gets he gets drilled in the eyes with uh, two silver arrows. I mean, kind of kind of crappy, but... Oh, well. He waited 20 years to get the chance to off someone... And then he gets rocked on his on his first time out. Shitty, but well, you know. well, at least he wasn't five days to retirement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No, he was just fourteen days from retirement. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like um, <clears throat> Brigitta, um, Artemis Battlebeard, and Alcine, as far as I know, are on their way to Waterdeep now. Hmm, we didn't know that. Are you positive about this? Is this is this information accurate? I just recently came upon it. Um, to be honest, I was going to track them down myself for both revenge for Santine as well as my own personal reasons, and I was kind of hoping that this group here would take up my call to arms. But I was going to take... Well, we were going to take care of the ogre and the shaman that attacked the town last night first. Uh, yes, we, we didn't want to tell them about that because... They had had a previous run-in. Well, this is coming from from Moonfire now, and she tells you that there had been a previous run-in with uh with the goblins before, so that's why she didn't want to tell the party about the you know about the attack from last night. <clears throat> they actually had their butts whooped. <laughs> a happy elite. 
Thank you very much for the follow, a happy elite. Yes, this. Uh, Thank you very much. Saga. Welcome to the High community. Shaman is quite a powerful uh, wizard indeed. Um, Heavy's got to be so uh, formal. I love it. Give us time to uh, let us debate on whether we want to take out these uh, this group of ogres first. It seems to be the best ploy. Uh, we do have the matter of the other children as well. <clears throat> yes, there are several children that are w on their way back to Luskin, and there is also several other children that are on their way back to Succumber, and several of the children were from Loudwater, so we, th we thank you for that. I can also share some more information about the, chi the smuggling children as well. Oh, please do. I know Elsene was in bed with Zark in the Lady of Shadows. Um, my guess, and from what I've learned, is that they've been t sending him to Waterdeep in the Jara. Mm. Well, we thought that there was a, a ship that was coming in in the middle of the night. Uh, there was some strange reason why they, they could not dock during the day. And this is Captain Harrowleaf speaking. And he he tells you that there was always some kind of suspicion about that. But, you know, the, the dock master confirmed that you know, it was a a legit shipment, and and after all of this had went down, they actually had interrogated the 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 dock master, and he's been relieved of his duties, but he really had no clue that they were they were actually smuggling children, and what they were doing was they were smuggling the children to different locations to Waterdeep, <clears throat> uh, also uh, to wag on wagon they were shipping them to the lands of, well, the region of Najara, and also uh, they were being shipped in the archipelagos and the whale bones far east, uh, way off of the, the lands of Faerun. So that that's as much as we know. Uh, but we, we know that there was another ship involved. We looked at the logs here, and there were no records of the ship called the Gooch. Uh, but we had actually heard that that boat was involved as well. So that boat would probably probably be the boat that departs Waterdeep. Uh, but other than that, we haven't had contact with Waterdeep. Uh, we've had a messenger uh, send a few messages, so we're just waiting to hear back. Yes, through um, Alzine's contacts, uh, would that ship have been called the Pell Minnow? Well, the Pell Minnow was docking here within Loudwater. So, yes, we, we have... There's actually quite a few shipments. It, it is docked here uh, on multiple occasions, almost almost a dozen times throughout the last year and a half. And every one of these departing times, well, the arrival time and the departing time is always in the middle... Well, actually, the, the log says in the morning, but it's actually been at night. So there's definitely been some inaccuracies in the logs as well and that's that's where you know Zark had come in because that's where he worked was was at the docks hey what's up Marius how you doing man so I'm going to greet uh, brother Griffin uh, very heartily and uh, good to see him again <laughs> paladins convert you yet, son. Good to be back in the favor and graces of the church. Hmm. Uh, Tomanuk will stand up and lift up a chair. Heat Batista. No. Um, <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> just don't hit me with the uh, big... Here bell. we go again. No, I won't. I stab uh, him. No. I will just lift up the chair, point at it, <coughs> and then uh, just throw a few gold coins at the father. Ah, yes! Tyr is always looking for contributions! Thank you! Thank you! And he just kind of stuffs it down into his, you know, kind of lifts his, pushes his robe to the side and just kind of, it's like he's stuffing it down into his bra. You know like a chick would do, stuff money <laughs> down in her bra? He's doing that with his undershirt, though. Okay, let's say it was like eight, nine, nine coins. Mm. Yeah, same thing. He, yeah, he, 
He jams it all down in there. Then I will sit back down and uh, when I'm putting the gold away. Are you are you interested in becoming closer with Tyr? <coughs> uh, what Just grunt and continue what, with what, what, what I'm doing. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, I'm ignoring him, and like I said, when I put the gold away, I notice a bundle, uh, sort of a uh, piece of cloth that I bring out, and it's. Uh, a few scales and the teeth and poison glands from the snake lady that I handed to to Malek. Well I don't I don't think Tyr can use anything of that nature. I I any to Malek. I, I, oh oh that's not for me. I'm 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 sorry. I I know that I was just being funny with you on that. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what you said, and, and then I look to the paladin and I say, "What? What did he say? Did I say something wrong?" No, he has his own ways. Um, he has been helping the young uh, apprentice here uh, with his uh, trade. Does he? Does he not speak? We have gotten a few words out of him. He once said, "Water." River. Hmm. Hmm. River and nightmare. Well, will you let him know whenever he's ready to become closer with Tear, that just tell him to come and see me, and we'll we'll take care of that. <laughs> and the crickets are starting to chirp. <laughs> so, Tom Alex handed me the. Uh, Stuff and I ah, this is from that snake thing. <laughs> this is fine specimens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, yes. This was do well. Everybody is just kind of looking at you like, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> We're not really interested in, you know, saving stuff, so we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> and Lady Moonfire says, <clears throat> um, yes, um, to the matter at hand here, uh, as you've already found out, the south wall had been breached again uh, by your your friend, I guess I could say, Shaman Sokansog, Sonkasog, and he had several ogres. Uh, Harleaf and his men were awoken out of the, the dead of night and they were actually able to thwart them back off uh, several of the ogres were killed but there was one large ogre that appeared to be undead and instead of an arm he had a flail, a large massive flail and he was just taking multiple people down at a time with this with his, it was, it was horrible so they, they had rushed off after we had taken several of them down. Thank goodness for our our archers. They had taken them down. We had the height advantage and they they took back off into the south wood. We were able to track them as well, but I think you already know that. Well, if we decide to go after them, do you have men you could spare to go along? No, we are trying to rebuild the wall just in case anything else happens. Basically, we have a all hands on deck. And a lot of the citizens of the town are helping as well, so unfortunately we just cannot spare any men. But maybe Wally in here. Uh, seems like he's taken a, a liking to you. He may be able to help you. <clears throat> I figured this is all semantics because the party already agreed to go take out the ogre with me. Oh... Ah. And then Moonfire says, he's got talents. <laughs> <laughs> I wink at her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Brother Griffin, we seem to have found a brooch that apparently has some type of magic on it. Uh, do you think uh, you could identify it for us. You mean the one that I had given back to you already? No, that was a ring. Mm. 
Mm, so you found a brooch now, huh? Yes. I'll take a look at it. <clears throat> Actually, you were able to determine that there was nothing, no magical properties. Uh, you know, you guys had all looked at it, and you can usually determine magic items in a short rest, and that that's anyone. But if it's a, you know, like a rare or something higher of quality than you would have to do, I would make you do an arcana check, but you determine that there were no magical properties that belonged to this brooch. Oh, okay. I it just had value. That. I kind of eyeball it curiously, but I don't say anything. <clears throat> looks just to going be, by what the list says, it said magic brooch. Looks to be pretty pricey, actually. You, you, you like that. You like the look of that. Say, well, at the very worst, gaming. you can get you can get some good coin with that. Yeah, I just Question. have to step in. Uh, oh, well, I think Warren and I are saying the same thing. Is it the brooch of no regrets? What the hell was he called? Something like that. Yeah, the brooch of no regrets. Well, I know there's there's one item, and I was kind of wondering about that. What you guys were going to do with that? But I did see it. I actually did see that on Melek's character sheet. Yeah, and that's why I'm asking, <coughs> is it that brooch you're showing, or another brooch? I figured he was referring to another brooch. I was looking at uh, the list of stuff that's on the wagon, and it said magic brooch. Oh, then, yeah, that's... Yeah. It's the brooch of no regret, but Melek's already scarfed that up, so... <laughs> oh, okay. He, he wasn't even there for that, and he scarfed it up. No, no, it was discussed, and we were, like, they're all like, yeah, you get it, you get it, take it. That, for a level 3 brooch, that thing is ridiculously powerful, seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it is really nice. <clears throat> Anyways. Now, what are you guys doing? I think we should take a rest and see if we can get the uh, go after the ogre in the morning. It is the morning, isn't it? It oh, is. That's right. All right. That that dream really did mess you up, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. It, that was it was you just wrote pretty bad. I was like, wow. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. There wasn't no no blood, gut, snot, piss, or shit or anything. I mean, it was just scales falling off and yeah. skeleton and. Yeah, that's yeah, not right. bad. I thought it turned out alright. No, it was awesome, man. I, I may give you an XP bonus just for calling me awesome. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do it every day now. Whoa, easy. Uh, the rest we had done while we traveled, was that sufficient to be a long rest? Yes. Everybody's back at full hit points. Everyone has their powers back. Dailies, encounters, utilities, action points, everything. Okay, good, thanks. Yep, thank you. So it looks like you're off to the, uh, to get some retribution on High Shaman Sanka Sog, huh? Well, hopefully. I think so. Hmm. Yes. More specimens. Wow. <laughs> All right. So, are you guys doing anything else, or are you guys? You guys have gotten all of a sudden. You've just gotten so quiet. Are you guys all tired out? You guys want to continue next week or what? No, no, no. Oh no, 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 no. I just don't want to take the lead. So, Shamash, Shamash is just quietly praying to himself, having to go up against that uh, shaman again. I just been talking to the barmaid here. Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, I, I saw, her, saw her slap him twice. <laughs> she does tell you, though, Batista, that she will give you the the penthouse again for you and your friends. It still has not been acquisitioned as of yet. This could very well uh, come in handy. Yes, this is very agreeable. <laughs> <laughs> You're so <laughs> formal, Heavy. I love it. <laughs> Alright, so she tells you that she'll send a couple of her employees up to take care of it. 
and we'll have that ready for you guys uh, next week. So uh, it will be the entire upper level. Well, there's actually two halves to the green tankard, and the one half is basically public where a lot of travelers and everything stay, and then you will have the other half, uh, which will basically be a almost like a like a house or a villa. So you'll be able to do whatever you want in there. So that that is now your base of operations here in Loudwater. So you guys uh, have gotten that back now as well. So all right, so we're gonna just basically move forward a little bit. Uh, the brother, the captain, and, and Lady Moonfire, they all they all exit and basically wish you luck. And uh, Moonfire says that she wishes she could send help with you. But unfortunately, uh, the town is, is, you know, they're in a time of need right now. And, and actually, Sacomber and Lork uh, have decided, to, and Daggerford have decided to send people to help as well. So... She just can't, unfortunately, uh, spare anyone, any guards or, or anything like that. I'm going to say, do not fret your pretty head, for we'll return once the ogre's dead. Whoa. And he kind of sings that. That's really nice. I like that. All right, gentlemen. Um, I need to pick up some supplies for our horses. Um, so I'll venture over to what? one of the food shops. We can, how about we do that on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Oh, definitely. No, no. It's in my journal. Ready for, it had already been ready. Just take it oh, off. Oh, yeah. That's fine. Absolutely. That's all calculated up. All gold's ready to go. I just need to take it off. No, oh, do it. Go for it, then. Yes. Yeah, gold's calculated. I just need to take it off. Yeah, let me... It's calculated up in my journal, and when Dave says the okay, that that's the accept acceptable gold amount from whatever it might be, a bushel of apples, okay, I'm going <laughs> to... Bushel. It sounded dirty, that's all I meant. He was trying to get some ERP from you, Heavy. He was trying to get some ERP, so... Yeah, you're, you're able to get that. Just to let you guys know that whenever you're, you know, in a town like you are, and if we're not actually gaming out of the town, you guys, it's like I told you guys, you guys can stop in during the week and if there's any kind of common magic items or anything, feel free to let me know and purchase away uh, so we don't do that in game. But, but anything rare or basically higher quality for magic items, because that's what 4th edition's about, man, magic items. So you're going to have to go to a larger town like a, like a Waterdeep, Neverwinter, something like that to get the more rare items. So just to let you... You guys knew that anyway, so I just figured I'd, I'd let everyone know because we have a new guy now, so... But... Alright, so welcome aboard there, new guy. Looks like uh, uh, the party's going to take him to your, uh, your singing. I have that way on people. Whoa. Can you blame them? Whoa. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a shame he's going to get his butt tonight. Total, you what? Total party kill tonight. I can feel <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> First night and the bard dies. <sighs> oh man. That would not be good. <laughs> you guys can't afford it, but okay, so we're gonna fast forward to uh you guys have traveled to the the actual ogre lair. And I'm gonna switch you guys over now to a new map. All right, you guys can see. First off, before we start, I just want to let you guys know that we're back on grids. So you'll notice I've basically magnified every map that I'm creating. I'm magnifying it quite a bit. And where instead of one square is one square, really four squares is one square, just because I want the size of the map to be maneuverable and, and everything else. So you can literally move uh, your characters now one square and that's that's how we're doing it now. I mean there's no more using the, the measurement until we can get everything, everybody on the same page with movement. Uh, we're going to use the grid. So 
you guys can just kind of goof around for a second and move around and that's that's how it's going to be from now on so did you change the numbers too i'm seeing oh also yes i i changed the the tokens uh we really didn't use movement and ac for variables there was really never change in that so the other night in the one shot as our host david he he used a bar for temporary hit points. And I guess about two months ago, or a month and a half ago, uh, Crump actually brought that up to me. And, and and I'm sorry if I... I don't remember you doing that, but I, I believe that you did. Because I have a lot of stuff on my mind nowadays. And so if, if you brought something up with me and I never got back to you, I'm so sorry about that, Crump. And okay. uh, so now the top bar that you see is it's an empty bar. Okay, because if you open it up, it says nothing of 10. You're really not going to have, if you have temporary hit points and everything, because that's what the red bubble's for now is temporary hit points. So, Heavy, if you get five temporary hit points, just hit five and hit enter, and you're going to see the red life bar go up. All right. Now, when you get hit, say if you get hit for 17 damage. Just take your 5 off, and then take 12 more off of your green hit point bar. Yeah, take that off immediately. Yeah, and there you go. The green bar is obviously your life. Red is temporary hit points, so I figured I'd put that at the top of the token. token. And then also, uh, the blue is still healing surges. This is more a deep blue. So all those numbers are always changing. So I figure it's easier for you guys to keep track of it on your token instead of keeping track of it on a paper because you already got to take you already got to keep track of your skills and your powers so well I'm sorry your your powers and your dailies and utilities and whatnot so anyways there you go and all the maps are now calibrated you know f to true 4e so we're we're just not you know everybody was you know what how I envisioned it working guys was was like this say I had Batista and hold on let me move these hold on smash smash is one square you guys are all medium so say that that this is how I envisioned it without using grids and it didn't work like that because people would get close like this and and get in here and 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 there'd be just a cluster f of tokens and that's why we're going back to grids guys it's just until we can visually see in our mind how it should be uh this is the way it's going to be until that time so i mean you guys really can't see it because i turned the opacity down but nonetheless this is what we're going to do now and it's going to be a lot better so all of the if you guys fight large creatures they'll take up basically 16 squares which is true 4e so it's going to be going to be good this would be a lot more accurate movement wise so all right so now that we've gone over that i'm going to start this adventure uh dave one quick thing my sure. hit points aren't right well uh should be 63 i i didn't change anything on the hit points that's on you bubba not me Mine were actually also wrong, so I don't know what it is, but I changed them back. Ah, yeah, you guys got to change your variables. I, The only thing that I did was I, I took the AC off, and I put, instead of AC, I turned it into temporary HP. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I did. I didn't change any numbers or, or anything, so... It's just, uh, for some reason, it seems to reset back to an earlier stage whenever... Hmm we end up on a new map. Yeah, I it's going really it, it's going to do that every time you guys level. So after you guys after tonight, I'll go ahead and seeing that you guys have changed the variables, I'll disassociate the tokens with the character sheets and then I'll reassociate them with the character sheets as well and then they'll be locked in for that. So every time we level, that's just going to have to happen. So Mm -hmm. Hey Dave, real quick, can you mm -hmm. uh, get my token into like a uh, horizontal position, turning my guy like vertically or whatever? Yeah. My little my little bender thing when I bend it looks weird. 
Well, you can you can solve that.